Hello everyone, I'm Steve Howard. Welcome to Sports Talk. Today we're going to do something different with our program and our lineup. We're going to look at the building of youth sports programs. And I have as my guest the, I guess the CEO and president of the Titans basketball organization here in El Paso, Mr. Dwayne Gully and Jason Williams. Thank you gentlemen for joining us today. How are you guys doing today? Oops, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now talk, sorry. <laughs> How are you guys doing really today? I'll say We're doing well. Um, thank you for inviting us. Um, look forward to it. I think we're going to have some audio issues out of Coach Gully today. You might have to carry him, Jason. <laughs> That's, tough. That's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Gully, he there. Doesn't know Yeah, I think he's going to be coming in and out. Yeah, I think so. Okay. You hear me? Yep, we got you. So, gentlemen, thank you guys for joining us here. One of the things that we really look to try to do is to help not only players, but organizations in youth sports and how they go about that. And so we want to focus really on building organizations. And so you guys have been around for a while here in El Paso. Um, you're one of the few organizations that have su su sustained su success. I'm tongue tied over here. Have sustained mm -hmm. success over several years. So I really, kind of really want to delve into how you guys built that culture, how you guys went about the process of building that organization directional, the direction that you want to take the organization and how you've gone about continuing to sustain and grow the organization day to day. So let's start with how did you got, what made you guys decide to build the Titans organization? Uh, Coach Gully, uh, if he can get started, because uh, I came in a little um, late, um, uh, so if he can, he can get. Can you hear us out there, Coach? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Go, go ahead. Okay, um, like I said, our our program has been around for. Uh, Quite a few years, about 18 years. Uh, uh, we kind of, uh, the objective of, of our uh, organization early on was uh, about uh, uh, making sure our student athletes uh, can play it. We decided to go uh, and go to players. We just wanted to give the uh, average player, uh, if they worked hard enough, they give them at that next level. Um, so, put them up, uh, need mission, need to have uh, and have a structure where you can meet the mission demands, and and, uh, and then focus on uh, uh, making sure that the players uh, have opportunity to uh, get better. Okay. And for me, well, for me, first of all, um, you know, Coach Gully, he, he, he had the program. He started the program um, about seven years um, prior to me coming on. Um, but for me to come on, uh, you know, I watched Coach Gully and, and uh, how he interacted and engaged uh, with, the, with the players. And, and from then on, I, I realized that uh, 
you know, keys, you know, to success um, by watching Coach Gully, um, by learning from him was, you know, uh, the coaches, you have to be about the kids. You know, once you establish that it's uh, it's all about the players, it's all about the kids, and um, then uh, you 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 have a clear uh, direction. You are focused on what that program is all about, and 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 uh, the kid, you understand the kids want to learn, they want to grow, and they also want to see those results that that we as coaches is trying to instill. Um, in those players. So um, the, I believe the first step is to ensure that you are about the kids and, um, uh, and you, you will have a, that's a great core to start with. Gotcha. So when you guys started the Titans, obviously like every other program that starts, what was the the driving motivational force behind drive uh, behind starting the Titans for you, Coach Gully? What what was your question again? I'm sorry. What was the motivation behind you initially starting the Titans? We started the Titans because I felt like that uh, that we had uh, we didn't have an organization that was really uh, within the city uh, that was focused on the uh, average player, uh, you know, helping those guys trying to try to uh, uh, get a partial scholarship or a, a full scholarship uh, at one of the the next levels. So. Um, so that's why we, uh, you know, that's why I started the program because I thought that at that time, uh, and then like I said, that was back in 1997, 98. Uh, we just didn't have enough clubs that was doing the traveling to these uh, 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 large events, uh, and especially the the NCAA events. Okay, got you. So when you started the Titans, was it because you wanted to provide an avenue for your son or was, was, was either one of your kids even playing on a team at the time? Yes. Well, for, for me, go ahead, coach. Uh, at the time, uh, yes, uh, I did, uh, my son was playing. Uh, and uh, uh, it actually uh, helped him to go ahead and uh, secure a scholarship uh, to play at the next level. Uh, he went on to play overseas, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, but, uh, you know, if you go back far enough, um, um, uh, we've, we've had some, we've had some, 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 some players that have, uh, what we call um, Showtime players. Uh, Cliff Tucker was one of those that was on that early on that played with the Titans. Um, and I think right around when Coach uh, Coach Williams came on, uh, we had Aaron Jones on our team. So, uh, and his brother uh, Alvin. So, uh, I mean, we didn't have some, 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 some really good players, really good people, really good student athletes to play for us. And you were going to say something there, Coach Williams? Yes, yeah, so, uh, for me, um, you know, my drive was ensuring that um, players, uh, student athletes understand the process, you know, um, as far as uh, seeking the right information to make sure that they're eligible um, when it's time to uh, actually attend college, you know. Uh, uh, and I say that because uh, when I was growing up, um, we didn't have that direction where uh, we understood, hey, you have to make sure that that you 
have all your core classes, the right classes, that you go through the right process to be able to um, go to that college or be recruited by that college. And, and that's something that um, I always want to ensure that, that we provide that to our students because not everyone know, not all the parents understand it, and, and that there's a process and, and the players have to make sure that they um, successfully um, clear those processes so that um, when it's time to be courted by a, a, a college and it's time to um, uh, sign to that college of their choice, that they are they meet those eligibility criteria. So that's a big drive for me. Got you. And that's definitely important at these days and times, especially this year out of all years this year above all with the ncaa allowing seniors to get another year and that's not just at the ncaa level that goes all the way down to junior college naia division one two and three so across the board and so it's going to be tough for 2021s in this process so you guys mentioned you started this because of a lack of exposure for the student athletes here in El Paso. So what are some of the things that you guys are doing at a organizational level to ensure that you're providing that regional and national exposure for the student athletes that are participating for the Titans? Go ahead, Jason. Well, some of the things we are doing, definitely, we are putting, ensuring uh, we as coaches are uh, on top of our game. Uh, we're making sure that we're getting out there, um, going to coaches' clinics, um, learning all that we can from from actual Division One all the way to JUCO college coaches to ensure that we're putting out the right product, that we're we're meeting the the standards, so that our players that they can reach these uh, these goals um, and get recruited um, because we're we out there doing the right thing um, for our students, for our student athletes. And uh, I'd like to also add that, uh, you know, we, we, we definitely want to uh, 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 make contact with as many coaches as we possibly can. Uh, we use all of the uh, uh, available uh, social media media to uh, you know stay in contact with coaches. Uh, you know now they they have a lot of uh, uh, avenues that you can use in social media, and uh, we try to use those uh, because I think this you know number one uh, it's it's uh, uh, really uh, uh, non expensive way to uh, to uh, promote your, your, your student athletes um, and also stay in contact with, with, with coaches. And um, we try to travel in a circle that we uh, have a lot of uh, flexibility. Uh, uh, every year we go and play and try to go play in a different uh, venue uh, get to know new people, get to know new coaches, uh, give our student athletes a different look at uh, different types, uh, different styles of basketball, different types of players, uh, you know, so that they have a little bit more knowledge if they are fortunate enough to uh, obtain uh, a scholarship to go play in an area like on the East Coast or the Four West. Uh, they, they won't be so uh, naive to to how uh, those players play if they have to be a teammate. So, um, so I think that's very educational in one way. Um, and once we travel in a circle of, for a couple of years, we want to try to repeat that uh, because then we know how much it costs, how long it's going to take for travel. And then it just um, makes things a lot easier for the for the organization, for the families, uh, 
uh, that's you know that's helping support the the uh, the trips. So uh, it's really easy for us to uh, to uh, um, you know uh, put these guys in a position to be successful. And and I just want to caveat, caveat that because um, I think um, exposure is definitely. Um, a very important piece of the Titans program. You know, we try to make sure that we get our kids out in front of as many as college coaches as we can. Um, no matter the level, uh, we just want our kids to uh, be able to get out and and get exposed and and showcases. Um, we are all about um, t getting our kids to to go to showcases and to showcase their self. So um, that exposure is, is one thing that we try to make sure that we stay current with. Definitely, um, that's definitely a big piece. As I, as I have conversations with college coaches across the country, really, that's the big thing is being able to see that student athlete play <clears throat> and it's like a 50 50 split on how they how they do that whether it be showcases or play individual player tournaments um individual player events coaches want to really get their eyeballs on as many players as they possibly can so as you guys go about setting your schedule and looking at, okay, these are the events that we want to attend. What's that process that you guys use? Is it done at an organizational level or do you guys have the individual players do it, letting college coaches know the different events you're gonna be at? Well, I, I would say initially, uh, Coach and I, um, we'll determine uh, what type of team we have. Uh, if we have some, some uh, you know, if we have some showstoppers, uh, you know, high level skill players, then, uh, you know, naturally we're going to, we're going to try to attend events where they're going to get the most exposure. Uh, if we have uh, uh, on average, a team that's an average team, we're going to get them in a development type, um, uh tournament but still in front of um in front of coaches and normally what we'd like to do is to take the younger guys which is most of most of those guys are sophomores and freshmen and uh, have those guys uh attend tournaments that uh that uh that they can compete in and at the same time get get a, a fair amount of exposure and we will let the uh, we will let the the college coaches know exactly uh, where we're going to be at, what time. Uh, we'll shoot them a text, and and that way they can come out and really get an opportunity to see, um, uh, you know, take a few minutes to see these guys um, uh, showcase their skills, um, and. Uh, that's a great incentive for the younger group. Um, you know, uh, even if the coach don't say anything, if they just show up, uh, give them, uh, you know, two or three minutes and uh, give us a thumbs up. Maybe there's a lot of them will just give us a thumbs up and say, hey, you know, I like 23, I like 25, I like 33. Uh, tell them to keep working hard. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on them. And that's basically what we want to do because we want to, uh, you know, continue to encourage those guys to, to keep working hard to try to get to that next level. You got anything you want to add, Coach? Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, definitely what Coach said. Um, and, and we build a relationship with, uh, with these tournament directors and, and um, showcase uh, uh, directors so that um, they know who we are, they know what we're all about, and, um, and they're – uh, they know that we're going to go to their events because we be, we believe what they do is in 
the same line as what we try to have our uh, student athletes uh, to succeed in. Um, so once we build that relationship uh, and they have relationships with the college coaches, then, then we try to make sure that we all come together on that common ground. Um, so for example, um, uh, if there's a tournament out there and we know that our team that we have is right now a development team. Um, so we, 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 we reach out to that director and uh, he or she normally um, looks at our team through, through our profiles and say, okay, uh, I'm going to put you here. Um, and so that these type of coaches are looking at that team, uh, that type of team, and uh, as well as if, like we said, if we have like guys that are, um, you know, uh, very advanced, very uh, um, have a, you know, have a, um, a uh, you know, a chance to go high D1 or something like that, then we definitely want to put them in that, that care category using the, the um, director of these tournaments. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about kind of like tournaments and whatnot. Let's let's look at organizational cultural culture and how you guys have built the Titans to to have sustained for this amount of time. So what what do you guys feel has been your greatest strength as far as continuing to remain relevant and continuing to build the organization year after year? Well, I think, I think our strength um, definitely is our environment, the culture that we have uh, with the Titans. Um, we make sure that we try to include, you know, all levels of talent. You know, we're not, out there um, seeking the best talent that's in El Paso. We're, our, our program um, tries to involve all talents and, um, and we try to take that, that well, um, that talent, um, no matter how skilled or not, and to improve them and to, to make them better. And once at the end of, our season, you know, they feel that they are a better player than uh, when they came to our uh, organization. And I believe that's our biggest strength because um, once those results are, are actually experienced and seen by other players, um, then they want to join this program so that they can get the same type of results. So I believe our environment um, is is our biggest strength. And so you mentioned environment. <clears throat> so I'm out of there. Oh, he's back. <laughs> so, you, so you mentioned you guys' environment. Um, what 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 aspect? of creating that environment have you guys had to focus the most amount of time and effort into cultivating in order to create that environment that you that you speak of so i think the biggest aspect um of our environment is um to gain the trust um, um of our players and the transparency uh, to the parents. So um, one is, you know, when you when you have a kid come to your organization, you're not just getting that kid. You're getting their mom, their dad, mom and their dad, their younger brother, their younger sister. Everyone is 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 looking at what are you doing for that kid, and 
So you want to make sure that in that environment that you have, that you're transparent, you, you making sure that the parents know that when, um, whatever finances that they use to support the organization is, is going to ensure that their kid is being represented in your organization. Um, and that environment that you um, has that culture that you make, you, you got to make sure that um, everything is on an even playing field. You can't, you can't um, give more attention to other players than to, to other players. You have to make sure that there's an even playing field and that every, the common goal is about um, that entire organization instead of a select few. Got you. Now, Coach Gully, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So you've had the, I guess you could say the pleasure or the displeasure of coaching mm. your boys through the Titans program. How, do, how have you been able to walk that walk of coaching dad and not letting one carry over to the other to continue the relationship that you have with your boys? Well, first of all, you have to have a talk with, with the boys, your boys, and, and their mom. <laughs> and uh, uh, you have to ensure that the boys understand that, hey, you are a coach and you got to be uh, fair to everyone. Uh, you know, even though you love the boys, uh, you know, you still got to be fair uh, and impartial to the rest of the team. And, and it's not about them, it's about the team. And if they want to be a part of the team, they got to, you know, they got to, they got to be a good teammate. And, uh, and not only be, you know, and I try to teach them not to be only leaders, but they also got to be followers, followers, uh, because I think followers, uh, good followers, make great leaders. And uh, and and I can say for, uh, you know, I can I, I can truthfully say that uh, I've had very very little um, uh, adversity with coaching the boys. Uh, because then also with the with the with the rest of the team uh, parents, uh, I sit them down, I talk to them, I let them I let them know, and I reassure them that hey, you know everybody's gonna be treated fairly. Uh, you know if they work hard enough, uh, you know they they get much more playing time if they um, uh, they do what they need to do at home, uh, in school, uh, and on the court. Uh, they're going to play. And uh, I also uh, try to run uh, a type of defense and a type of offense that require uh, at least 80% of the team to participate. Uh, so we do a lot of pressing. Uh, we run uh, continuity types of offenses. Um, and, and, and that keeps everybody on the floor. So, uh, you know, most of the time, everyone knows that they're going to get an opportunity to go out and play. And, and get some fairly decent amount of time. So um, I think that just makes the team uh, more cohesive. Uh, uh, they gel quicker uh, and have better chemistry. Okay. So Coach Williams, now, what exactly is your role with the Titans? Because I know it's more than just coaching. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, being an associate head coach, I, I have a lot of other jobs. I um, I plan the the um, traveling. Um, I uh, coordinate uh, the uh, tournaments, and um, you know, I uh, collect whatever finances we need to make sure that all of the expenses are are covered um as well as um hold our um uh quarterly 
meetings and uh, I, uh, I record the minutes and ensure that the, the, the um, I well oversee that the, the, that the, um, the books are balanced and as well as coach. Okay. Good stuff. Look like we lost Coach Kelly again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so as we kind of go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I, 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 the other piece is that um, you know Coach Gully and I are both our um, NCAA certified coaches, and um, and I uh, one of my other duties is to ensure that you know all of the players are are um, are in in our Titans profile with the NCAA, and ensure that that we are meeting all the requirements that the NCAA require us to meet. Uh, in order to um, enter their events and and to uh, close out the season. Okay, okay. So as we close up here, um, what advice can you impart on a mom, a dad, or someone out there that's looking to start an organization for the first time? Like, what advice can you give them in doing that process? Well, first of all, um, definitely it has to be about the kids. Uh, you, you, you can't start an organization um, with the, what I would, in my opinion, will be distractors. You know, you, you have to make sure that um, when you're about the kids, then those other areas that that's going especially if you um are just starting you you want to make sure you understand where you are and what's your purpose what's your direction um for the kids the type of kids uh, or type of student athletes that you want to um have in your program um and then next you want to make sure that uh that you 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 have a culture that um, that is correlates with your philosophy, okay? Um, so you want to ensure that your culture um, can exist over and over again. You know, not just through the times that you have higher talent kids, but you have to make sure your culture can exist when you have maybe just developmental kids. So uh, so that's the next key to ensure that culture, their environment is um, sustained and conducive to the, to the environment that you have. And then lastly, um, uh, I'll go back again to transparency. You know, uh, if uh, you want to make sure that everyone in your organization knows that um, you're, you're about the business of helping student out athletes and there's no nothing out there that is is um prohibiting that or negating that and for parents to see and what you're doing and how you're doing it and and why you're doing it and why this costs this much and why do you want my son to do this or daughter to do this you know once they see that and believe that it's just like your 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 scheme once you get your student athletes to buy into your scheme and and they start seeing the success um then they get more confidence they get very motivated about what they're doing so the same thing with the, with the parents when they see in that you're you're putting all this activity into their child their their son their daughter then they start to get motivated and they start to tell other folks that, hey, you want a good program, you want a transparent program, you want someone that is doing this for your kid, then this is the group you should go with. This is the program you should go with. So um, that's what we look to do. So Coach Gully, we were, we were right. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Yes. So Coach Gully, we were kind of wrapping up here. 
and the question I posed Jason was what advice would you impart in someone who was looking to start an organization for the first time? Um, what, I, what I would recommend is that uh, they visit uh, several organizations within the local area um, and um, kind of get a, a, a bird's eye view of what goes on uh, you know, with an organization uh, that travels, uh, that's, that's linked in with, with uh, the coaches and the event operators and, and, and uh, you know, just, just pick some brains and, and, and that will help them develop a picture of how they want to do their program. They don't have to uh, model by, you know, they don't have to model by anyone. They can just, you know, they can do their own program. But I tell you what, uh, it's, it's several programs here in the city that uh, I think on the girls and the boys side that are doing very, very well, and and we are well represented um, uh, Midwest in the West uh, of the United States. So, um, uh, you know, I guess what I'm saying is that you know don't try to do it all by yourself. Go out there and. And, and mingle and, and get to know some of the, the local coaches uh, that that travel and you'll get a very good picture of the things you want to do and the things that you don't want to do <laughs> uh, you shouldn't be doing gotcha well I thank you gentlemen for your time um, it's definitely been eye-opening and, and a lot of gyms that organizations that are trying to start their own programs can can glean from this so i thank you guys for taking that time and i appreciate it yeah thank you Steve, uh, thank for you your for invitation. Having definitely <laughs>